If you could take a pill to skip sleep, allowing you to feel fully rested with no side effects, would you do it? What would you do with a full 24 hours? Probably procrastinate more. Edit, wow, thank you for the awards. You just made me realize reading this thread and scrolling Reddit right now is a waste of time. Oh crap she's starting to be self-aware, they're unto us hurry make this comment to bring them back to Reddit. I actually turned off Reddit and you've succeeded in bringing me back. Oh god. Also don't want to be that person. Bring them back again. Yes, sir. We must bring back user underscore perfect imperfection, Reddit link. It has been done. Nothing like a bunch of procrastinators uniting to procrastinate together. Do not let her escape the vortex. User underscore perfect imperfection we summon thee from the realm of the productive. Reddit link. I wasn't being productive but you have brought me back again. Here's a webcomic about an entire society that starts talking that pill. Society stretches the workday out to 18 or 20 hours, often of meaningless stuff. The main character is allergic to the pills, and needs to sleep, so it's considered a disability that he can only work 16 hours a day. There's a bunch of other side effects. Edit, fix the link. Web link. Man I wish that site showed the comic in a more efficient way. Reading a page takes like 5 to 10 seconds at most, and then you have to click next and wait for the next page to load. Gets annoying pretty fast, especially on mobile. I think I understand why, more clicks equals more revenue? Or maybe it's due to the release schedule, if it's a page a week or something. It's almost always due to the release schedule. Also every page load reloads the ads, i.e. more impressions. The same reason listicles slash slideshow articles exist. There's very little incentive to make the information easy and fast to parse when you need to be making ad impressions. LOL I came here to say, I'm sure workplaces would hand them out for free and tell us we now work 16 hour days. Control plus F power nap. Upvote. The power nap comic is located here, powernapcomic.com, web link. Take more pills. Yep. I'm a former junkie so the first thing that came to mind was, what happens if I take three instead? Your bowels feel fully empty. With side effects. I'm a bottom so depending on the side effects that sounds like an easy way out of douching. Aren't you worried about being perpetually awake? With no side effects. Worried? No. Excited? Yes. Right? Would you like an extra 8 hours a day? Where do I effing sign? Edit 1, thank you for the seal of approval. Edit 2, knock it off with the you only going to have to work more. If you keep that mindset of course that's what is going to happen. Let's try creating a better world instead of staying glued to the old one, folks. Dare to effing dream. Extra 8 hours isn't the exciting part to me. Get to feel fully rested? Yeah, sign me the F up. Not only that, but what will you do with that extra room in your house that you no longer need? Lie down awake in it probably. Why would I even have a bed if I don't need to sleep? Got to F somewhere. Isn't that what balconies are for? You surely mean the local Walmart cart return? I do coke. So I can work longer. So I can make more money. So I can do more coke. I do coke. Complete the stack of games I don't have time to start, complete the stack of books I'm too busy to read. I would need all that time just to decide on which game to start next. And in the end still go back to that one game you already played through a hundred times. Epping New Vegas. Every time. I feel seen. I've actually stopped buying new games, I know they're just a lie to myself. Then you sir are a step further than most of us. My trick is to keep using a really low quality old computer so that I'm limited to late 90s and 2000s games it's cheaper and also cheaper. I still need to play through Doom, Undertale, Red Dead Redemption 2, but no, I have to get all the achievements for Slime Rancher first. 
Edit, totally forgot about Skyrim. That too. And end up playing the same multiplayer games anyway. Surely this game of League will be different to the thousands of others I've played. Been browsing through Reddit for an hour after dinner and this comment reminded me to read the book that I started reading yesterday. The pandemic has shown me that lack of time is not why I don't get things done. What I need is a pill that fixes my procrastination. Procrastination is incredibly well studied. Reading the research enabled me to identify some of the triggers that lead to me procrastinating and develop coping mechanisms. Is a good place to start. Is also helpful. Edit, on Coursera is also pretty good. You can view the material without paying for the course. Web link. Could you sum it up? I'm procrastinating too much to read that. This comment speaks for all of us. I haven't even begun to procrastinate. I'm procrastinating on my procrastination. I'm just putting it off till later. I just remembered all the crap I have to do. Time to feel guilty about it. Or I could just check out what's on Reddit. What's everyone else up to? Oh, procrastinating. Nice. Now I feel better. I'll read it later. Lamau I just thought this as I saved the comment. And if you are me you never actually go back to your saved posts slash comments. When you procrastinate to read the article by reading the comments trying to find somebody who could sum it up and then give up and go back to doing nothing. A meta-analysis of procrastination's possible causes and effects, based on 691 correlations, reveals that neuroticism, rebelliousness, and sensation-seeking show only a weak connection. Strong and consistent predictors of procrastination were task-averseness, task-delay, self-efficacy, and impulsiveness, as well as conscientiousness and its facets of self-control, distractibility, organization, and achievement motivation. Okay and now at Eli 5? The authors read a whole bunch of papers on procrastination and then ran some math on all of the data in them. They found that rebelliousness, no mom, I don't want to, neuroticism, mood slash mental disorder, and sensation seeking, please I just want to feel something other than the yawning void, were not good predictors to someone procrastinating. However, procrastination is pretty well predicted by, essentially a list of different presentations of various procrastination behaviors, task aversion, don't want to do something, task delay, why do today, what you can put off to tomorrow, self-efficacy, get her done, and impulsiveness, ooh, look, donut, and conscientiousness, do it right, self-control, okay, no donut and I need to get some work done, distractibility, how easily other tasks catch your attention, organization, everything has a place, and everything belongs in its place, and achievement motivation, feelings about finishing things. Thank you for translating the clever words into something more palatable. This legit made me laugh, but was also really helpful. Thanks for that. But that really doesn't help. It basically says that people who don't want to do something are likely to procrastinate. They basically just define the word with a page of words. Exactly my thoughts, they said what it is not why I'm doing it. They've shown that you don't want to do to your own interest in the task. They've shown that it is not related to being attention-seeking or mentally inept. Proving that it is not related to the person being stupid or incapable, it's more related to the perception of a task. So what about when you start procrastinating doing things you enjoy doing? Eli 5, you ain't got any motivation or good reason to do the task at the given moment. So when you really want to achieve certain long-term goals and get bummed when you're not getting any closer, it's because you don't see any short-term benefits? Like with working out or doing an assignment? Correct. It's like when you calculate what you need on your final exam to pass instead of spending that time studying. No short-term benefits? I ain't going to do it. It takes forever to do and a lot of motivation to get me started? Hell no. It isn't getting done. It's like when you calculate what you need on your final exam to pass instead of spending that time studying. This just brought back so many memories. I was generally a good student so it wasn't a matter of pass slash fail, but like if I can study for an hour and get a B plus, why would I study for three hours to get an A? I'll just take the B plus and do something else for the other two hours. So, 
by well studied, what we mean is we do what we want? Basically, ain't nobody got time for that? Some factors contribute more to procrastination than others. You're welcome. Wow. I'm cured. Let me know when you find out what the comment above said. Continued research into procrastination should not be delayed. I feel like this was intentional. They put the pro in procrastination. If you don't want to watch the whole thing, 5411 has the most valuable technique discussed in the video summary of points that stood out to me, managing emotions, you need to be able to recognize your negative emotions associated with approaching tasks you tend to procrastinate on, and realize that procrastination is primarily about feeling good now. Realize that the good feelings you get from accomplishing a task should be used as motivation to continue to work and make progress, not an excuse to celebrate slash procrastinate more, for example work late for an essay due the next morning, then do nothing about your exam next week after you turn in your essay since you feel good about having accomplished one assignment. Procrastinators often suffer from lack of identity, don't know what they want to achieve, or why they want to achieve it people who are social perfectionists and are motivated to work because of other people's slash society's expectations rather than their own sense of accomplishment are more likely to procrastinate at a high level, tasks often seem insurmountable since they are so vague. For example working on my thesis or studying for my class often means doing nothing, whereas reading four pages of a textbook to understand a concept I need to summarize in my thesis is a concrete, broken down goal. Most important technique introduced at the end 5411, be intentional about your implementation. Instead of I'll work on my task all day Saturday, which few people ever do successfully, use the formula, in situation X, I will do Y to achieve sub goal Z. By identifying your situation, action, and goal, you have broken down the task into an easily achievable, chewable piece. Great summary of a useful technique. I try to apply this with starting tasks by committing to the first 10%. For example, if I have a large project I need to get started, I will commit to just laying out my tools and materials. Once that's done, I might call it good for that project for the day and feel good about it. But as many procrastinators know, once you get started on something it's much easier to continue. Especially if you can break the rest of the task down into manageable subtasks. I always feel better checking 10 small goals off as I complete subtasks rather than feel like I haven't accomplished anything until the entire project is done. Formatted. If you don't want to watch the whole thing, 5411 has the most valuable technique discussed in the video summary of points that stood out to me. Managing emotions, you need to be able to recognize your negative emotions associated with approaching tasks you tend to procrastinate on, and realize that procrastination is primarily about feeling good now. Realize that the good feelings you get from accomplishing a task should be used as motivation to continue to work and make progress, not an excuse to celebrate slash procrastinate more, for example work late for an essay due the next morning, then do nothing about your exam next week after you turn in your essay since you feel good about having accomplished one assignment. Procrastinators often suffer from lack of identity, don't know what they want to achieve, or why they want to achieve it. People who are social perfectionists and are motivated to work because of other people's slash society's expectations rather than their own sense of accomplishment are more likely to procrastinate. At a high level, tasks often seem insurmountable since they are so vague. For example working on my thesis or studying for my class often means doing nothing, whereas reading four pages of a textbook to understand a concept I need to summarize in my thesis is a concrete, broken down goal. Most important technique introduced at the end 5411, be intentional about your implementation. Instead of I'll work on my task all day Saturday, which few people ever do successfully, use the formula, in situation X, I will do Y to achieve sub goal Z. By identifying your situation, action, and goal, you have broken down the task into an easily achievable, chewable piece. My saved folder is way too packed with crap I am going to read later. Procrastinating 2A? Man, Wonder if there's an article to help me with that. I need a TLDR of this so bad. Continued research into procrastination should not be delayed lol. Yes. A pill to correct my self-discipline would be way better. Dextroamphetamine. Now you can focus more on the fact you're procrastinating. And do avoidance tasks with more energy. This is legit what happened to me as a guy with ADHD who takes Dextro. 
Routine tasks like cleaning the house feel like a waste of a pill. With all this newfound energy and focus, I could be doing amazing things. Why clean when I could program something great? So instead of harnessing my energy, overchoice takes over and I get nothing done. ADHD here, cannot emphasize getting the right medication is a lifesaver. Vive Vance all the way. Procrastinating is a coping mechanism rooted in negative feelings, so talk therapy would probably be more effective than pills. I recently found out I have severe anxiety through a therapist. That's why I always had trouble with procrastination and not knowing where to start. For the first time in years two nights ago I went to bed with a completely clean kitchen, and woke up and made the bed, put the dishes away out of the dishwasher and cleaned up everything else. Felt amazing, definitely get help if you feel like that. I wish knowing I had anxiety and what to do about it actually helped lol. Yeah, I don't have anxiety, I'm just too unmotivated and lazy to do anything. I have anxiety, and am unmotivated and lazy to do things. I believe it's called Adderall. Nope no sarcasm needed that is in fact what that pill is called. Edit, thanks to everyone who is an expert on Adderall. This is a joke. Stay rock and roll. No, Pro Vigil is where it's at. I took that when I had swing shifts and holy hell, talk about productivity. Yeah but where's the fun in taking a safe stimulant that doesn't provide an overwhelming dopamine high that can result in more serious consequences? I'd probably save that pill forever and use it on one of those rare but miserable times where I have to drive late at night. Not very exciting, I know. But dying isn't very exciting either. Who said it was just a single pill? No need to save it when they only cost a quid each, I always keep some on hand. A quid each? I'll just get it prescribed and get it for free. If you can I highly recommend it, I'm on Elvance myself. Imagine being responsible. Edit, 8k upvotes. Imagine imagining. This pill exists. It's called armadafinil. It's a narcolepsy drug, but, for some reason, the US Air Force is the world's largest customer. No side effects? There's no biological free lunch. You eventually have to sleep or there will be health consequences. Having taken it before, I will say it is a much more pleasant experience than taking stimulants to stay awake. It's just a general wakefulness feeling. Medafinil changed my life. I was always tired before. No stimulant side effects, you just feel normal. That being said, the first time you take it, there is a serious risk of a flesh-eating autoimmune reaction. You need to taper it for a month and stop at any sign of a rash. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.